Airbnb recently made changes to the way verified profiles work. Profiles are now noted as identity verified. What does identity verified mean? And what qualifies as having an identity verified? Is it the same as having a verified profile? And that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. Stay tuned until the end to find out how to make sure you're only hosting guests with their identities verified. Welcome to another episode of Airbnb Uncovered. I'm Matt, the creator of AirbnbUncovered.com and Airbnb Superhost. On this channel, I uncover some of the best kept hosting secrets and share with you everything that I've ever learned after hosting over 3,000 guests. My tips, tricks, and best practices are focused on helping new hosts earn more revenue, attract the best guests, and achieve superhost status faster. If you're like me, you recently noticed a change to the guest profile sections within message threads on Airbnb. They used to say verified profile, and now they say identity verified. So let's dig into the difference and what it all means. Airbnb is now using three methods to verify a guest's identity. The first is legal name and address, and these must match the guest's bank account and credit card statements and or utility bills. The second is by using the last four digits of a social insurance number. And the third and final way that Airbnb is verifying identities is by using a government issued photo ID, pictures of the front and the back. Based on what I know about the banking sector, my guess is that Airbnb is now using third-party credit monitoring systems to validate a guest's identity and is relying less on pictures of government-issued photo IDs. And this is a good thing because I'm sure it's fairly easy to upload a picture of a fake or altered photo ID. But some guests may still be asked to upload a picture of their government-issued photo ID. Airbnb says that methods can vary from country to country, and sometimes third-party databases get things wrong, so this provides a backup option to verify a guest's identity. Airbnb accepts three forms of government-issued photo ID, a driver's license, a passport, and a national identity card. In addition to uploading the photo of the government-issued photo ID, a guest may be asked to take a picture of themselves and upload it. Airbnb will then match the photo just taken with the one that is shown on the government issued photo ID. Guests can do this in a few ways. They can take their picture with a phone or a tablet and then upload it through the app, or they can use their computer and upload it to the website. The photo must be brand new and taken at the time. And this uploaded photo will not replace the profile picture and it's not shared with host. All of these options represent three strong identity verification methods, in my opinion. And I welcome this change since running all of these checks without Airbnb's help would become quite difficult and time consuming. For me, only hosting guests with a verified identity is the only way to go. If a guest can't provide me with their full name and some kind of proof of that, some kind of proof that it's really them, then I'm not going to trust them either. And as we all know, trust is of prime importance when running an Airbnb. If you're having trouble deciding which guest to host, then you're probably really going to enjoy my free guide to only hosting the best guests and avoiding the worst ones. In the guide, I show you how to get problem guests to avoid booking your place and how to avoid having too many declines so that your acceptance rate doesn't go down too far. And with a low acceptance rate, your listing could slip very far in search results. So to help you, I've included the exact messages I use to get guests to avoid me, and you can copy and paste them right into the messages you get from potentially problematic guests. You can get the guide for free from the link in the description below. At the beginning of the video, I told you that I'd share with you how to ensure that you're only booking guests who have an identity verified. There are two ways to do this. For instant bookings, you need to make sure that you have checked the appropriate settings 
when setting up your instant booking. To ensure that you're only hosting instant booking guests with an identity verified, you need to edit your listing settings. To start, go to listings and then click booking settings and then scroll down to guest requirements and click on the edit button. From here, you want to scroll down just a little bit and look for the government issued ID requirement. Go over here and click on the checkbox to enable this option. Then click save. For non-instant booking requests, you have to check this manually, unfortunately. And you do it from the messaging screens. But not to worry, it's quick and easy. On mobile, you just tap the details and then just below pre-approve special offer decline buttons, select view profile. From your computer, on the right hand side, you'll see view profile just under those same pre-approve special offer and decline buttons. Unfortunately, Airbnb removed the ability to require that all of your guests have an identity that is verified or verified profile as it was called back then. And that feature was really handy, but unfortunately it's gone. How do you gain trust from a potential guest? Leave it in the comments below. So in the end, a guest who has their identity verified is basically the same thing as a verified profile. The real difference is that verified identities have strong verification behind them, whereas the old verified profile relied more heavily on social media networks and uploads of photos. So please be sure to make sure that you have your instant booking set settings checked appropriately and double check profiles of non-instant booking guests manually so that you only host the guests that have an identity verified. Being a responsible and reliable host starts with being selective about who you host. And it's also the key to earning higher revenues and getting your pick of the best guests. My goal for this video, and all my videos for that matter, is to teach a tip, trick, and best practice. If you think that I hit my goal, then please give this video a thumbs up and rate it highly if you're asked. If you want more of my tips, tricks, and best practices to be on your way to becoming a super host, then please subscribe to my channel and click on the notification bell to be alerted of a new video. Thanks again for watching and bye for now.